Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's video. Uh, today is a lesson in my stupidity. This is my uh, P. Huey T926A, or there's a lot of different brands of these, these Reflow ones, 962, 962A. They're very common among uh, hobbyists. Uh, unfortunately, I bought mine very ignorantly. I thought you could just plug and play it. And so for the past few months, I've been suffering uh, with uh, adjusting the temperatures, kind of compensate for the different um, tolerances of this machine. Uh, one day I got curious about if I could do any upgrades to it and started doing research on the internet, internet and found a, a small cult following after these machines and a lot of modifications you could do. And so I've been suffering with the smell of the uh, cheap tape used in it and I've been suffering with the uneven temperatures for very long. So today we're going to modify this machine and make it better and look to see how bad the machine has gotten inside since I didn't modify it first. All right, so I took off these surrounding screws here. It didn't look like I need to move any of these. So let's see if, yeah, this will lift off here, I believe. Or not. Let's see here. Why will you not come out? Uh, just a quick tip for anybody disassembling theirs. Uh, I saw a lot of people taking the screws out of the drawers to try to get it out. If you look here, do you see this little tab? Let's see the section, this little tab. There's two tabs on each side. You just push the little tabs down. You just push the little, you just push, you just push the little tabs down. So on mine, you push this little tab down and you pull the tab on the other side up. I don't know why. Don't ask me why. I didn't make this thing. But anyway, if you just if you just get really frustrated with these tabs and work on them hard enough, the drawer will pull out. Uh, the reason for pulling the drawer out is there are two hidden screws underneath here. I didn't see them at first. So there are two hidden screws. Careful not to mess up the thermocouples or the infrared heat lamps. Interestingly enough. I was told that there were only two lamps in these uh, fixtures, but mine appears to have four. That's pretty neat. I got four. Also, electric screwdriver, your best friend. It, if you think you're too cool for an electric screwdriver, um, you're not. All right, so let's see if we can't pull the top off of this thing. Get the camera adjusted. There we are. See if we can't pull the top off of this thing. There we go. Alrighty. And there we are. Okay, it looks like everything is tied down. Which way? Uh, this way seems better. All right, off to the side this way. Seems a little bit better. And there we are. Here we are looking at the inside of this and you can already see my first mistake which is leaving this tape on this uh, some form of painters tape and i have been running this and smelling the smell and just suffering with it because i thought that that's what i needed to do i was very ignorant and so all of this painters tape has just been getting just been getting nasty now i will warn you this is uh, fiberglass this is a glass wool so you want to be careful when you're taking this apart a uh, fiberglass can uh, be very itchy um fortunately i grew up around construction so i can uh, deal with it but you know you might want to take some some safety precautions when you're taking this apart but let's get all this tape off of here i'm going to replace most of this with uh capton tape i tell you the truth i expected all this tape to be brown I expected it to be uh, nasty and goopy, but it actually looks like it held up quite well, so it must not be a painter's tape. It must be some form of cheap uh, thermal tape, but we're going to replace all this with Kapton. So I'll get to doing that. I just pulled out what looks to be a aluminum foil covered, uh, I guess it's a reflector piece that goes down in the front here. Let me tip the camera down a little bit. It goes down in the front here. Just pulled this out. So I'm also going to cover this, I believe, with some Kapton tape. I don't think that this... Oh, it will come off. Okay. So I'm going to peel this old tape off. This is what I expected it to look like. If you see here where it got hot, it's all brown 
and nasty. I don't believe the, the tape around here was getting very warm because of the glass wool, but this, where you can see it was exposed to the oven, got very warm, and that's why my oven has been stinking. So if you get one of these, make sure you tape all this tape off. All right, so I'll turn like this and make it stink. All right, so the Kapton has been installed. Uh, my taping is not the greatest in the world, but it's okay. The tape here is just meant to hold down the glass wool and to insulate around the gaps and things like that. This doesn't really take this much heat. I would recommend taping uh, this a reflector that goes down in here. But all the rest of this, I've seen people tape almost the whole entire thing, and you don't have to do that. Um, just taping around the edges will be fine. I did tape some around the uh, thermocouple. Um, inserts because of the um, aluminum tape coming up. Now, I would suggest that you get two different rolls of Kapton. I know it's expensive, uh, but Kapton tape is not the greatest tape in the world as far as tape goes, but it has great insulated properties. It's great for this kind of stuff. Uh, so it may not be the greatest tape for holding things together, but it sure is great for this kind of stuff. I'll get two rolls. This is a one inch roll and this is a half an inch roll. Um, Usually they have these on giant reels and they just cut it to size. So I would get a, at least a, a, a larger and a smaller roll helping greatly in projects. All right, so let's uh, move on to the next part of this project, which will be uh, programming the firmware. You have to forgive me for my last statement, but the next part of this project is to install a cold junction temperature sensor for the controller. Now the new firmware we're going to upload into this uh, microcontroller will have the ability to read a cold junction temperature sensor in order to figure out what ambient temperature is instead of what it does now, which is just guess at what the ambient temperature is. There's a hard value programmed in here and it goes off of that basis instead of reading. And so now with this uh, circuit being 10 to 15 degrees accurate, we can get it down to hopefully about five degrees accuracy and have a lot better results when we reflow our boards. Now the next thing I wanna try to do is install a 4.7 K resistor between these two points here on the board, these two points right here, according to what the, the wiki told me. However, all I have is 0603. I do not have an 0805, I do not have a 1206, I have an 0603 4.7 microfarad resistor. So, you get to go along with the journey and see me struggle to try to put this on. And you say, why wouldn't you uh, wait to order the parts? Because I'm impatient. So I'm going to try my best to do this. And uh, if it doesn't work, we just go on and do something else. All right, so I have um, scraped the uh, solder mask away. Uh, man, so let's test and see this fitment here. Let's test and see. And that looks like it will work. Good enough anyway. Uh, make sure you scrape enough off to where your boss will ask you, are you sure you should have done that? Make sure you scrape enough away uh, so that they, uh, so that is questionable. So let's tin that right there. Okay. Then take and tin the legs together on the sensor itself. Uh, one of these legs is just a not connected leg. It's just there for the uh, package. So let's see. If we can't solder this down like so if you haven't noticed my soldering skills are not the best but they're not the worst either all right so now this wire needs to attach to here I normally leave my wires long and then I'll figure out what length I want when I put it on there so let's see here um, about like that so let me get this wire trimmed up and we'll see how it looks all right so i have 10 the wire and everything now comes the most difficult part which will be trying to put it on this resistor without desoldering on one side of it so let's see what i can't do here just gotta be real careful with it hold my mouth right you always gotta hold your mouth right so if you ain't got your mouth held right let me take and bend this down here So you've always got to hold your mouth right in doing these type of things. If you don't, then it ain't going to work. All right, that looks good. That looks good. All right, so that's that upgrade made. I need to take and secure this sensor maybe with some silicone or maybe just some Kapton tape. Uh, we'll work for that down there. And then I make sure I secure this wire. And we'll work on the firmware upgrade. 
Okay, so here I am getting ready to program the firmware in this thing. Now I'm going to leave a link in the description to the wiki I used. However, it's not exactly the best. So I had to uh, look up a few tutorials and I think I've got it uh, basically down pat. Of course, you have your connections to your ISP editor, RX, TX, and ground. Uh, just make sure you reverse them whenever uh, you come to your serial programmer. This is just an uh, off-the-shelf Amazon FTDI programmer. I have Flash Magic on the laptop and I'm using the settings that are in the wiki. The NXP chip in this is an LPC2134. So hopefully everything will go right. Now if I understand correctly, I need to take pin 1, which is my white wire here, and ground it. So let me find ground on here. There's a ground right here. So if I understand right, I have to take this and ground it when I boot up the machine. Now, be careful, because when you boot up the machine, this all is live. So here we go, I'm gonna boot up the machine and then unground this, and I assume it's in boot mode. I assume, goodness, this thing is, uh, is very loud. Now it's doing different. So let me on my laptop here click start and hopefully it will program. Now let's see here. No fail to autobod. What is autobod? Let me see here then. Okay, so we are having problems. Let me see here. I'm going to go ahead and, and turn this back off. I may have just uh, ruined everything. I don't know, but I need to figure out. Currently, my uh, computer is saying it's having a problem with Autobot. I'm not quite sure what that is. So let me figure that out, and we'll be back to this in a second. Okay, let's try this again using a different COM port. Maybe I did not have the right COM port. All right, here we go. Turn it on again. Okay. Now I have it at a different COM port. It is COM port 7 instead of 3, which it was initially. And program. Yep, there we go. Erasing device and programming. Pretty cool. Pretty cool when you see the lights lighting up here on the FTTI programmer. And while it's programming, uh, don't know if anybody uh, out here uh, watches many of my videos, but I'm trying something a little bit new with today's video. I haven't scripted it i haven't went through and made multiple uh, passes to record each thing i'm just doing it all live doing it all raw as i would do it uh, here i'm at work today and this is just what i'm doing at work so if you like these kind of videos that are more uh, raw and just i'm just videoing what i'm doing at work i have no time to get a script together i have no time to make all this look good and fancy uh, leave a like and leave a comment and let me know uh, whether you like that or not uh, it seems like it's going to take a little while to program, so I'll go ahead and uh, put a jump cut here, and we'll go to the next part of the video. Alrighty, well I've got it turned back around, and I've set it down. One odd thing uh, that I noticed when, when it went into boot mode, uh, the whole thing started running. So the fan at the back was running, uh, the elements inside were running, it's actually quite warm. So just watch out for that, the thing's going to turn on and start uh, fully running for the entire time you program it. So just be aware of that, this thing will get extremely hot. One other odd thing is the Flash Magic software did not tell me uh, that it had finished programmed, it just quit. And went back to, to, to normal, that was kind of odd as well. But this is the first boot up, so let's see what happens here. I'm actually kind of nervous. Oh, look at that, look at that, look at that. There it is, the new, um, the new um, stuff from United uh, Engineering. Pretty cool, pretty cool, all righty. And I assume the fan is going because this is, uh, this is warm from where we programmed it. I assume the fan is going. One interesting thing is the fan light flashes now. It didn't used to flash like that, so pretty cool but you can uh, hear the fan going I did not put the PWM mod for this fan here um, because uh, I'm lazy and uh, it doesn't bother me that much it's not that loud it's on the other side of my lap okay well let's get her back together and see what she'll do 
Alrighty, I have some uh, 6337 chip quick that we're going to throw in here and we're going to see how she does. So let's throw this in here and see how good it reflows. On a small side note, use a thermocouple that is rated for the heat that you were trying to read. Just a side note. Well, I will admit I am not complaining. This uh, actually looks quite... Uh, quite good um don't know if you can see it on the camera but the solder joints actually look quite quite good um maybe a bit i think i need a bit more heat um the profile i was using the 63sn 37pb it does not go up to 235 as the um as the uh, data sheet recommended so i may edit and make my own but uh, I have to admit, just an issue out of the bat, just with the test, it does look quite, uh, quite good. I think that'll be uh, it for today's video. I'm going to do some more experimenting on this unit and different things and try to, uh, you know, work with some offsets and things and see um, exactly custom profiles and different things. But thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'll make sure to keep everyone updated on my progress with this. And hopefully there'll be a new video uh, not a year from now. Thank you so much for watching.